Hey guys, what is going on? It's your boy Solar be back with another video. In today's video, guys, I have got some spawn protection commands for you to get your server ready to be launched or just to protect it from hackers or griefers or anyone that's trying to destroy your spawn. I've also got some basic warp commands that I'm going to be showing you as well, just so this video isn't like two minutes long. But, guys, these are the basic needs for your server and I've also got to say before this video starts I now have a casino in my realm so if you are into having a bit of fun with your friends in a casino with no harm whatsoever this is all fake money so it's not nothing real um, but it's all good fun we have roulette blackjack three card poker stuff like that come into the realm soon so if you're interested in joining my realm, or if any of this does interest you, then make sure to hit me up on Xbox, Solus Reap YT, and I'll sure send you an invite to the realm. Or if you're on PC, then make sure to make a Microsoft account and come on the Bedrock version of the game and hit me up like that, guys. So yeah, let's get right into today's video. For basic spawn protection, you will need these two command blocks here. And we're going to be using adventure mode and survival mode, um, testing for a radius of your spawn. So if your spawn's 100 blocks wide or 200 blocks wide, then you're going to be using this. But for my server, the spawn is absolutely massive, so we've had to up it to 800 blocks. But guys, what we're going to do is we're going to have a block type command block on repeat. The condition is going to be unconditional. The redstone is going to be always active. It is going to execute on the first tick and delaying tick is going to be zero. Now guys, if we look at the command input here, we're going to put game mode space A space at A open square bracket mode equals survival dash r equals 800 close square bracket now guys what this is doing it's putting everyone in game mode adventure everybody in the radius of 800 blocks who are in the game mode survival so if they are in survival mode when they come into spawn in a radius of 800 blocks of this command block it's going to make sure they are in adventure mode so that makes sure when people are coming from their faction base to spawn, to use the shop or anything like that, then they get put into adventure mode so they can't break anything. Now guys, we also need the opposite of this. But guys, if we do the exact same command and put it different, you're going to have commands overlapping each other. So guys, the way we fix this is now we do another command block, which is a block type repeat, condition, unconditional, redstone always active, execute on first tick delay in ticks zero and if we look in the command input here we are doing game mode s at a open square bracket mode equals adventure mode dash radius max equals zero uh eight zero one close square bracket now guys we're doing a radius max here guys uh, for this command block because if we just done a radius it would overlap each other and they would constantly get switched to survival and adventure mode therefore they will get spammed in chat and also they will still be able to break blocks in spawn it can get very very annoying and it can cause a lot of stress on the server if you do this so make sure you put a radius max of the size of your spawn so if your spawn is 200 blocks long you would put game mode a at a mode equals survival radius equals 200 and if and in this one you put radius max equals 201 just one block extra you can do two block extra if you want but you don't have to do that one block is all you need to do so guys that's how you do the spawn protection and so this one makes sure everybody that comes in the radius of 800 is the command block if they're in survival mode it will put them in adventure mode and this one, 801 radius max of this command block, which is anywhere outside of this command block, if they are in uh, adventure mode, they will put be put into survival mode. 
So that means that when they log off, say like 10,000 blocks away from this command block, and they log back in the server in adventure mode, they will get put straight into survive mode thanks to this command block right here. So guys, that is the spawn protection. Let's move over to some necessary command blocks that you will need in your world. So guys, we want the wither to be constantly killed. This is simply by slash kill wither. Uh, otherwise, hackers will come in and start spawning the, the withers everywhere. Same goes with the ender dragon, which is simply just a slash kill underscore ender dragon. So guys, for the wither, you want the block type to be on repeat, the condition to be unconditional, redstone always active, execute on first tick, delaying ticks zero, command input is simply just slash kill space wither. The exact same thing is for no dragon, the block type is going to be on repeat, the condition is going to be unconditional, the redstone is going to be always active, execute on first tick, delaying ticks is going to be zero, and it's going to be slash kill ender dragon. Now guys, we also want people to not be able to fight in spawn. Ignore this, this is just for my uh, text to be invincible, that's for um, the floating text. But um, with the no PvP in spawn, we want to make sure that in a radius of 300 blocks, this is the size of my actual spawn, um, but in the radius of 300 blocks, we do a block type repeat, condition, unconditional, redstone always active, execute on first tick, delay in ticks zero. This is going to slash effect at everyone in the radius of 300 blocks of this command block who are in the mode not creative. You don't have to do this. This is just so admins can hit people if needs be or hit things in spawn if needs be. But this mode equals creative is not needed. You can just leave it like this. So at all radius equals 300. Strength for one second, the strength is going to be 255 and it's going to be true. And that right there is then going to give everyone strength for one second over and over and over again. And it doesn't give them any bubbles either. So you're not running around with bubbles everywhere. This just stops people from attacking because it's strength 255, which disables PVP if the strength is that high. So guys, now let's get into the warps. The warps are going to be a little bit longer, so I'm just gonna do a little transition here. But we're going to be getting into some basic warps like uh, the home papers, the spawn papers, teleport into random areas that you want to teleport to, and other things like that. So as you can see, these are all the areas of my, um, my uh, server. So we have the cove, we have a home paper so people can get back to their home. We also have a shop TP. We also have a spawn to, so people can come back to spawn. And we also have a garden. We also have a farm and we also have Hermit Hill. You guys will know what that is if you play on my server. But anyway, let's get into how this works. So guys, now I am here doing the um, Warps, so guys, with the warps, the way they work, you can have any item named a certain item. So let's go in here, and as you can see, we have the shop. And if we go in here, we have uh, the um, symbol, then the number, and shop. And that's, that goes the same with home here, and also goes the same with spawn. As you guys can see, you don't have to have them these colors. You can make them whatever color you want. And you can make them whatever item you want. I just find it easier to make them uh, papers and uh, firework stars. But guys, the way the, this works is if we throw down a slash spawn paper, it's pretty obvious. We throw it on the floor. It says going to spawn in three, two, one, and then we get TP to spawn just like that. Same thing works with the shop. If we throw this down, it will say three, two, one one and we get tp to the shop as you guys can see the slash home though works a little different the slash home works in a way where if we throw it down it will kill us and take us back to our home where we set our spawn point i can't use this as i am in creative but i can assure you that it works and i'll explain to you how that one works in just a minute but guys if we look at the slash spawn one now which is this one right here. 
when we throw it down, we have this command block here testing for when we throw it down. So the block type is going to be repeat, the condition is going to be unconditional, the redstone is going to be always active, and it's going to execute on first tick, and the delaying ticks is going to be zero. You can put this on different ticks depending on how big your server is. The maximum you can put it up to is 20, which is every second it's going to test. I won't uh, I won't recommend you put any higher than that because that can uh, lag your game and it won't make it as, as effective. But guys, as you can see, when we threw this down, it turned the comparator on. So, like I said, block type repeat, condition unconditional, redstone always active, execute on first tick, and delay in ticks 0 or 20, depending on your choice. The command input, though, is going to be test4 at e, the open square bracket, name equals, and then the name of the item, and then close square bracket. So, as you can see, this is slash spawn, the exact same way as we have it named on the piece of paper. It has to be exact with capitals and all. It has to be exactly the same. If it's not the exact same, this won't work. But when we throw it down, um, as you saw, we throw it down and it activates. What that does is gives this command block here a block type impulse condition, unconditional, redstone needs redstone, execute on first tick, 40 ticks, and the command input here is going to be slash execute at e, the name equals, and then the name of the piece of paper or the name of the item. And we're going to do it at the relative coordinates, which is here, I'm just going to show you, which is here, these are the relative coordinates. It's this symbol right here, if you didn't know. Um, and let's go to title at a, in a radius of three, sorry, um, open square brackets in a radius equals three, and then close, and then it's going to action bar the person, and then it's going to put a little message saying go into spawn, and that's the exact same for this one, going to spawn in two, same for this one, going to spawn in one, and then what's it going to do here is it's going to slash execute the entity name equals the spawn, as you can see, spelt the exact same way as before, at relative coordinates, and it's going to TP at P, which is the nearest player, R equals 3 to a set of coordinates, which is 207, 49, minus 360, facing 227, 50, minus 360. These coordinates will be different for you. You don't need to do the facing command. We just do that to make sure people are facing the right way when they enter spawn, but you don't need to do that. It is not um, mandatory to do. But guys, Let's see how the shop works. The shop works the exact same way. As you can see, it's testing for an at entity name equals shop. The exact same way the shop is spelt. And the block type is going to be repeat. Condition, unconditional, redstone, always active. Execute on first tick and zero tick delay. When we throw it down, it's going to give this output here. And it's going to do the exact same thing with the uh, going to shop in three, the action bar thing. Um, as you can see, it's just executing at the name of the item, at the relative coordinates, title at A, in the radius of three, action bar, going to shop. And once it's done all three of them, it then simply just TPs that person to them coordinates. But guys, then we don't want this lying on the floor all the time. We want to then get rid of this. So the way we do it is we put a command block at the end of this, which just, instead of testing for the entity now, we are killing it. So the block type is going to be chain, condition unconditional, redstone always active. That's for all of these, by the way, except from these are going to be conditional. So chain, conditional, always active, 20 ticks. Chain, conditional, always active, 20 ticks. Chain, conditional, always active, 20 ticks. But for the last one, guys, it's going to be unconditional, always active, chain with a zero tick, and it's slash killing the entity's name. So for spawn, as you can see, we're just killing spawn after we TP the person. Same for the shop, we're just killing it after we TP the person. But guys, as you can see, the, all the warps are pretty much the same. They work all the same way, but you see here, home is a long one. So the way home works is the exact same way all the others do. We're going to block type repeat, condition unconditional, redstone always active, 
delaying ticks zero and it's going to execute the first tick. This is testing for at E, name equals home, as you can see. And when we throw it down, it turns it on. And it says going home, same way as before. But guys, once it's done that, we are now going to slash game rule, keep inventory is true. So this means that they do keep their inventory for a split second. So it turns on keep inventory. Then it's going to execute at E, name equals the piece of paper that you're using or the item that you're using and then it's going to relative coordinates it's going to kill at a in the radius of three of this paper and then it's going to game rule keep inventory false so what that's going to do is it's going to turn gate turn the game rule keep inventory on kill them and then turn it off so when they respawn next time they will have their stuff on them still and then it simply just kills them and all of these are on zero ticks except from these these are going to be on 20 ticks so it does it in a few seconds but guys if we throw it down obviously because i'm in creative it's not going to work so it's not going to kill the piece of paper as you can see um but you guys that's pretty much it for all of these if you want me to go into any more detail or if you want to see how i've done the money system let me know down in the comments below and also i will explain to you how we've done banned items and also how we've stopped pistons from being able to be found in jungle temples as you can see they cannot be placed down and also we've got some banned items so if you want me to show you how i've done the banned items or the money system let me know down in the comments below because that's always fun to know um, and maps are also banned as well as you can see uh, because it's factions all these are banned as well but guys if you want to see how i've done that then let me know down in the comments and i hope you guys have a wonderful day don't forget to like favorite comment and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one